nice because he runs over the network so the first thing we're going to need to do is set up some networking on one of your hosts configuration networking and we're going to add in a VM kernel port onto a new switch it will pick the first available NIC Click next now I'm going to use this for vMotion as well obviously in a production environment you would carve these two off separately but I want to put everything across the one switch in this little test environment I've also ticked for management to save it erroring later on and I'm going to give it an IP address on my test network put in the subnet mask, 24-bit mask now if you didn't have the default gateway set it would complain at this point and you could click edit and put one in click finish and there is our new switch that we're going to use for vMotion and for iSCSI. Now I'm going to repeat exactly the same on the other host. Networking, add networking, VM kernel, everything exactly the same. Yes, I could create a distributed switch, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give it the same name, vMotion, and management traffic. IP address, obviously it needs to be a different IP address. On the same subnet as the last one we set up. Click finish. And Okay, set up open file. If you're doing it as a, a VM, set it to Linux and put it on a 2.6 kernel. I'm putting a 64 bit version in. You don't have to, there is a 32 bit version available. Alright, I'm going to put 100 gig because I don't have that much space on my laptop here. Click finish. Okay, when it spills up, just press enter. I'm happy with my disk so I'm going to skip that and the graphical portion will start at the welcome screen click next as you can tell from my dulcet tones I am indeed English United Kingdom next now I'm manually going to set my partitions up yes I would like to initialize the drive Okay, I'm going to create a forward slash boot. It's going to be HD3, and I'm going to set size to 102 megabyte. And so it boots. I'm going to force it to be primary. Okay, I'm also going to create a forward slash again HD3, and this is, I'm going to set to 1585 megabyte. Okay. And the final partition, I'm not going to give it a name because it's going to be a swap file or page file if you're a Windows type. Set the figure to a higher figure than the amount of physical RAM that the machine has. Yeah, that's just because we haven't got a lot of memory, that's fine. Just click yes. Now we're going to set up an IP address, click edit, we don't want DHCP, we want to manually give it an IP address put this on dot 50 24 bit mask, 255.255.255.0 ok I'm going to set a host name for it, this one's going to be called iSCSI dot picnetlive.local as opposed to pnetlive.com set its default gateway which is on 254 and its primary DNS which is on dot one we're happy with that click next ok to get our time zone and locale simply click set up the root password which obviously you won't forget 
confirm the password, click next. Now it's ready to install. Simply click next. Now this takes quite some time. Uh, for the sake of the video, I've speeded it up considerably. At this point, you might want to hit pause and go and have a cup of coffee. When it's finished, it'll say congratulations and it'll ask you for a reboot. Remove the CD and let it reboot. Don't worry about that fail, that just can't talk to an NTP server. When you see this screen here, it is up and operational and it tells you that you need to configure it via its IP address on port 446. So let's do that. It's HTTPS 192 169859. Remember it's dot fifty and it's on port four four six. Okay, it's an untrusted certificate, that's okay. Out of the box, the username is openfiler, that's all in lowercase, and the password is simply password in lowercase. And that will lock us in. No, I don't want to remember the password. Right. To start off, select the system tab and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and we are going to add in the local subnet. Give it a sensible name, like local subnet. Put in the network address. Now you can put individual hosts in here. Obviously then you'd put in a 32-bit mask, but I'm just going to open it up to the whole network, because this is just my test network. Yep, and make sure share is displayed, and hit update. OK. Select volumes. Block devices. There's the physical drive. We're going to edit the disk because remember there's a lot of free space on it because we only put those three partitions on. The rest of the drive, we're now going to create a partition that we're going to present with OpenFiler. Change the partition type to physical volume. You can alter the size if you want, I'm just going to leave it as defaults. And click create. And there it is. That's what we're going to be working with. Now we need to present it. So still on volumes. Volume groups. We're going to create a new volume group. There's the one we just created there. Give the volume group a sensible name. And tick the physical volume and add it to the volume group. Now again, still on volumes, go to add volume. By default, the one we've just created will be selected. And our little pie there will be all reddish brown. Go down the bottom, and we're going to create a volume, give it a name, set its size, and set the volume type to iSCSI. Click Create. And our little pie should turn green, hopefully, if everything's gone well. Now, we've got Services, and we're going to need to turn on the iSCSI target server. So click Enable. Finally, we're going to go back to the Volumes tab. This time we're going to select iSCSI targets, and we're going to create one. By default, it'll put in an IQN, just accept the defaults and click Add. And we are going to want to map a LUN to our new iSCSI target. We've only got one, and not a mapped at the minute, so I'll click Map. And it will assign LUN 0. Click Network ACL, and there's the subnet that we created right at the beginning. Change that to allow and click update. Now if you want to set up chap authentication, I'm not going to bother, you can set up a username and password on here. And I'll show you when we configure the other end of the button where you configure the other end of that if you want to. 
just log out of there. Right, jump back onto our ESX. I'm going to go onto my primary ESX box. I've got configuration, storage adapters. Now, iSCSI adapter will be all the way at the bottom. So scroll down and select it and click properties. By default, you'll see it's in a disabled state. You need to click configure. Tick the box to enable it. Click OK. And after a couple of seconds, it will go to enabled. Click on dynamic discovery and add in the IP address of our open filer iSCSI target. Which was, if you've been paying attention, 192.168.59.50. Now, if you want to set up chap, you can do that with that button there. But as you remember, we left ours blank. There it is. Close. Now, it will ask you to rescan horse, horse bus adapters. And that will chug away in the background there for a few seconds. Now, if we select storage. Add storage. We're going to add a disk called LUN because it's iSCSI. Next, all being well, there it is. There's our open file at iSCSI disk, around about 100 gig in size. Next, next. Let's give the data store a name. Next. I'm going to accept the default block size. Next, finish. And that will create a VFMS volume on our ISCSI target. That's what it's doing now. And after a few seconds, there it is. Well, that's 100 gig in size, and it's a VMFS volume. On the second host, got a configuration storage adapters. I like the first one. It will be disabled by default, so let's scroll down the bottom and repeat the process we carried out earlier. Configure, enable, OK. Now it's enabled, dynamic discovery. Add in the IP address for our SCSI target server 192.168.59.50. OK. Close and it should ask us to rescan. Hopefully, yes. Rescan the HP here is in progress. Now, when we got storage, there's our ice cuzzy target because remember we formatted it and presented it on the other box. That's you ready to go. Don't forget to visit us at www.peatnetlive.com. Thank you very much.